peeking out. <laughs> Just lurking. <laughs> well, everybody. Yeah, reading between the lines. <laughs> welcome to Carvey's oh, Twigs <laughs> Bird of the Day. And this time, you, my background has even more birds. We got a doorburb. And we got Oka Mango. But of course, we're also joined by uh, Nekogata Bonito. Uh, we got Drive, we got Millie Moth, and we got Luna. So if you're watching on YouTube, check those people out. Check the links below. But anyway, we're going to do a bird of the day. And today is St. Patrick's Day. So what kind of bird? Ha <coughs> ha. What kind of bird would I do on St. Patrick's Day? Well, today's bird is a little bird called the Northern Lapwing. Oh, look at that bird. That's a pretty bird. That's a, that's a pretty, pretty bird. You got that's the nice bird. little that's crest on their head. You got oh, some man, nice... I like the coloring on it. Look yeah. Very cool. A little bit of emerald, a little bit of ruby. And that's a very festive it green. Yeah. A very pretty bird. Very pretty a bird. A iridescent bird. Yeah. 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 Northern Lapwing, very beautiful bird. Very beautiful bird. Well, let me let me tell you a little bit more about the Northern Lapwing. Uh, they have a couple nicknames. They're called the Peewit, the Chewit, the Green Plover, and the Pie Wipe. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. Imagine, imagine you're like outside and, and you just see the bird. You're like, hey, look, guys, it's a pie wipe. Yeah. <laughs> These sound like slurs. Yeah. It does. I mean, it does not sound like something you would call a bird. Listen here, you little peewit. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, see? That guy over there, you was such a green plover. <laughs> you, you see that? You see that guy in green chilling over there? He's such a toot. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, shoot your pie wipe. <laughs> so these birds are, um, you know, they're 11 to 13 inches long. So that actually puts them around the same size as a crow. Damn, they're big. Um, but their wingspan, much bigger than a crow's. Uh, 26 to 34 inch wingspan. It's a pretty big wingspan. So it's just like a little bit smaller than a duck. You know, kind of around that size there. And they're going to weigh about 4.5 to 11.6 ounces. So not quite a pounder, but... Uh, you know, light bird, light bird. Uh, the good, good soaring flyers. And uh, their average lifespan is three and a half years. Now, if they reach adulthood, they're usually going to make it four or five years. But, uh, you know, this is pretty typical. Most birds don't survive the first year. Infant mortality is the biggest reduction in lifespan. But uh, they found that so some three, of them have lived up to like nine years. years in the wild, but right? What's that? It's 3.5 years in the in the wild, right? Yes, but this is a bird that's not usually kept in captivity. Once in captivity, you are usually going to live about a dozen years. But uh, you know, wow. they're they're a bird that's not commonly held in captivity. They got a lot of protections around the world because, uh, was it? I'll tell a little bit later. They nearly went extinct in the 1920s. No. As did most of the animals that live in Ireland, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, uh, they have kind of a cool sound. I'm gonna play for you their, uh, sound that they make right now. It's actually kind of a nice call. Yeah. Oh. I'm sold. I need one. Yeah. Gonna open up a breeding center today. <laughs> wee hmm. wee wee wee. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of a cute sound. Yeah. It also sounds like a Lamborghini walking. <laughs> a little bit. What an odd thing to know. Oh, you're yeah, in my garage. I or... got this new uh, Lamborghini here. <laughs> it sounds like a bird, you know, guys? <laughs> or somebody's just playing around on a theremin. I'm not sure. Ooh. But uh, as you can see, they're pretty widely distributed. Uh, the vast majority of them are going to be in, as you can see, Europe. But they uh, have sparse population centers through, you know, parts of Northern Africa, through the Middle East, all the way through uh, Russia, and even all the way to Japan. And then some have even managed to cross the Atlantic, and there's a few of them over there on the eastern coast of the United States. Oh, so, wow. So, pretty widely distributed bird. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. Now, the, the colorations on there, the, uh, the yellow areas are places you're only going to see them in the summertime. The blue areas are places you're only going to see them in the wintertime. And green areas are where you can find them year-round. Yeah, it's ah. kind of hard to see on that map because it's kind of squeezed in there. But it's, it's you know, they're, they're widely distributed. And, you know, they don't, they're not like everywhere in the countries they're in, but they got some good, you know, pockets of where they are. But as you can see, the the British Isles, very common in the British Isles year round. And uh, going to the next slide, 
Well, we're just going to go straight to the last slide. Why are we covering this bird today? Because they are the national bird of Ireland. Oh. That's why I picked this bird today. The uh, Back in 1990, the Irish uh, legislature says, uh, we need a national bird. And they're like, how about this one? No one's like, well, it's green, so sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> and, and I think that's exactly how it went. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's if, only, if only all meetings could be that efficient. <laughs> Yes. Green bird, time for lunch, boys. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Who's ordering pizza? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think they made a good choice. It's a good bird. It's a pretty bird. Um, but uh, one thing is that these birds do migrate a lot. Uh, they they pretty much don't live in the same spot their entire life. They'll, they'll pick a spot, hang around there for a breeding season, and they'll just start moving around. Um, but when they do that, they uh, move in pretty large flocks. It's uh, pretty rare to see one of these all on their own. They, uh, they're a very communal, very social bird. But not only do they socialize with uh, other birds of the same species, more laplings, but, uh, um, well, the, the golden plover is also a lapwing, but uh, they're, well, more golden in color. But they uh, tend to flock up with them alongside of them. And then, uh, for some reason, they're always seen hanging around large groups of black-headed gulls. Uh, so I won't, I'll try not to hold that against them, but uh, yeah, they associate with gulls. They got crushes. I guess, I guess. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is that they say that the gulls often are more like hanging on to them and the gulls have been known to steal their food and it's kind of an issue and they've had to adapt to the gulls to protect their food because the gulls will steal food that they've caught. Huh. Yeah. Um, one thing that these uh, birds do is that uh, they're not big uh, tree dwellers. They're, they're ground-dwelling birds. They like to swim in water, but they do all their uh, nesting in damp areas where there's lots of mud, and they'll, like, make, uh, make nests in the mud. And you'll have, like, a colony of nests, so there'll be, like, a whole bunch of nests all in the same area. And usually the women will be uh, sitting on the eggs and incubating them, and the men will be there you know, working in groups to fend off predators and stuff like that. But uh, but it's not all the time. The women, you know, sometimes go out hunting and protecting as well. And, and the males will the males will incubate the nest too. And then once the babies are born, both parents do help raise the baby chicks. Oh. So it's a, it's a communal and family raising thing. So, uh, you know, positive points for them there. Yeah. I do like that you refer to them as men and women, like they have like little vests and dresses they wear and they work with tools. <laughs> okay. We're out there with their shovels. Yeah, I suppose I should, it probably would be better for me to use sex terms rather than gender terms because... No, no, uh... no, I think it's, it's, I like it. It's cute. It's very cute. Can you imagine that bird with a bow tie on it? Oh, it'd be so cute. Yes, I'm doing so it right cute. now. Like that bird's like the... already got drip. And very fluid gender roles. What progressive birds? I mean... Right. <laughs> they've, they've actually found that, uh, you know, gender fluidity is a thing in the animal kingdom. And I think it happens especially mm -hmm. in birds, too. So it's like, yeah, you don't want to see if it, if it can happen in nature, then it's not it's not that weird. Look, <laughs> just don't don't look up the sex lives of ducks. OK, just yeah. don't. No. Just don't. Oh, boy, I have there are things you can't unknow. Un yeah. unsee and unknow. It doesn't it it's... involve like a corkscrew? Yeah, it's like it's... watching Gurren Lagann. That's oh, OK. It. Yeah, that's exactly that's what I think of, of when I watch that anime. <laughs> Yes, but anyway, we're not talking about ducks. We're talking about yeah. lapwings. Yeah, lapwings. <laughs> um, but they I found that uh, bird. these birds are, for the most part, nocturnal. They uh, they prefer to be out at night and uh, kind of sleep and do stuff during the day. Um, and uh, they found that a lot of their hunting at night, it's uh, there's some certain size of fish and worms that it's easier for them to catch at night. But also, they're less likely to have their food stolen by gulls at night. <laughs> Those fucking gulls. So, yeah, they've actually gulls, found yeah. that uh, lapwings do more hunting at night the more gulls are around. It's uh, it's wow. kind of funny. <laughs> Man, french fries just weren't enough for the goddamn gulls. They had to go after <laughs> their natural... <laughs> I know, right? Ah, stupid gulls. But talk but... about potatoes. I mean, it's the gulls. They, they, they want everything. <laughs> they do. They do. I mean... Mm -hmm. They will not sleep trust, until every fry and me, worm I'm... is theirs. <laughs> I've I've been told that my viewpoints toward gulls can be a little problematic at points, and but you know it's just like I'm sorry, gulls are the natural enemies of crows. You're a firm, you're a firm anti gullite. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're the sworn enemies of the corvids. That's right. There's gonna be some. There's gotta be some kind of 
young yeah. adult book about it. Probably. The I should write a children's book the about the war the between dolls and crows. And then the ducks, they just want to hoard all the yummy fries and the potatoes. Mm -hmm. That being said, fries and potatoes aren't really healthy foods for birds. <laughs> Not, not the most well, nutritious. I mean, they're not, we're not eating fries because we want to, you know, stay They're in not shape. healthy food for me either, but that doesn't <laughs> stop me. Yeah, it's true. Right. It's true. Um, I mean, it, it's not our fault that they're delicious. No, right. I mean, I suppose I should mention one thing. Like, we're down to the goals. I, I, I have a confession to make. One of the top killers of the eggs and the young babies of lapwings are, are, are crows. <gasps> crows? Crows, crows, yeah. crows have been known to crows have been known to kill baby lapwings. It's, it's true. They they want that sweet protein. Mm -hmm. yeah, that sweet, sweet, dapper, sweet that drip. dapper protein, right? That drip, now, yes. Now to be fair, this is mostly Squishy. my European cousins, the carrion crows, doing this. Not us good American crows, but <laughs> Corvus. Oh, okay. not <laughs> not not you, God fearing American yeah. crows. So, yeah. <laughs> So it's jingoism that saves the day. I see. Yay! It's Yay. freedom. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's it's it, unfortunately it's a thing when I was see crows. It's not the American ones that are at fault. <laughs> but yeah, I was looking at their top predators, and their top predators were like foxes, badgers, owls, and crows. Yeah. Well, at least you're at the bottom of the list, right? I mean that's one hell of a list to be on though. That's yeah. some you know. those are some pretty cool predators you're friends with yeah, there. You're, yeah, you're yeah. the worst of the worst. Well, I mean crows crows are I mean like well, of all those species, we're the ones that the are crows like are the, the most smartest of them all. Yes, oh. crows are the smartest animal on the planet. And that includes humans. Anyway, um <laughs> so uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh back in the nineteen twenties, these guys almost went extinct. Because apparently their eggs are delicious. Like, absolutely probably, delicious. You know. <laughs> and so poachers and hunters and stuff were going around and basically just going to those big nest pools and just scooping up as many eggs as they could find. And so you would have, like, an entire colony's worth of eggs just taken. And obviously that's not good for sustaining populations. And, uh... But luckily, the law was passed, and almost every country that they were in has uh, has banned the practice of taking their eggs, and now they've come back pretty good. But unfortunately, over the last 30 years, they've had a noticeable decline in population, but they're blaming that on uh, their uh, probably, probably due to climate change and habitat loss. As is, you know, isn't that always the case? Yeah, it's always the case. So, but... They're not endangered or even threatened. They're uh, they're labeled as near threatened. So they're they're doing okay. They're doing okay. Anyway, my thoughts on the lap wings. I think they're pretty cool birds. You know, not super smart, but uh, they're pretty looking, and they're very community focused. And I like community focused, so I give them I give them good grades. They have soup kitchens and. Soup kitchens. And you know what they serve at those eggs. soup kitchens, though? They serve their eggs at the soup kitchens. <gasps> oh, my oh, God. No. oh my God! I heard they're delicious. <laughs> their eggs are they're their own worst enemies. <laughs> Barbara, your eggs this year? Fantastic! What have oh you been God. eating? <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> been oh, eating geez, them good yeah. potatoes and fries. Oh, geez, yeah. Oh, for crying in the sunshine there. Why are they? <laughs> why are from the mid from the Midwest? That's a really yeah, good Midwest know, accent. They're just huh? fortified. Okay. <laughs> okay, we haven't heard from you. What do you think of the lap wing? Oh, okay. Oh, she flew away. Me? Yeah, <laughs> you've been quiet the whole time. I'll, I'll I know what your opinion on the lap wing is. What? Twerking. <laughs> Did she say twerking? I think I she twerking. said twerking. Yeah. yeah, I heard twerking. What? No, twerking. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, she's thinking about if she can sell her own laid eggs. Yeah, probably. Whoa. You you can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess I yeah, you can. Yeah, okay. Yeah. How many eggs do you lay in an average clutch? Uh, uh, zero. 
That's a really personal question, Corvus. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That, is, that is personal. That's not a problem. Corvus asking ask the real questions. <laughs> I mean, we know Millie lays thousands of eggs at once, but that's, uh, you know. What? I mean, she's a mouth. Thousands? What they do, right? <laughs> You make me seem like an egg slut. <laughs> I didn't say they were all fertilized. I mean, <laughs> I didn't think it was a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, a slut like, for eggs, which is like different. if it's literally thousands of eggs, you could literally start like an egg farm. Mm -hmm. And I can only put my ovipositor in one chest at a time, so yes. I forgot. <laughs> 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 so who's volunteering? De uh, maybe the demon hunter, not me. Yeah, Whoa, Demon Hunter no, seems no, no. to be. I spend all of my day avoiding things like this. <laughs> but you'd be I, most I suited for dealing with feathers. whatever comes yeah, out. Fluff. Anyway, uh, we're going to call this uh, <laughs> Bird of the Day done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to watch this on YouTube, please hit like way. and subscribe. <laughs> and uh, in the comments, I'm going to have links to, or in the in the description, I'm gonna links to all my awesome friends who are here. So go ahead and give them a follow too. And uh, we're going to call this part of the day done. All right.